Alrighty, everybody, what is going on? Sorry for the technical difficulties causing a 15-minute delay in the start of the stream today. Uh, today is the 15th of January, 2020. We are 15 days into the first month of the new year. And we have been having a lot of fun on stream recently, alright? But today, we're going to mix it up a little bit. In fact, the next few days is going to be pretty much some interesting stuff. Rather than just the standard kind of ongoing playthroughs for me, we're going to do some different kind of stuff here on the streams, which is good. Variety is the spice of life indeed, isn't it? Right? That's what people say. <clears throat> I just want to forewarn everyone. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I was congested. Uh, my throat was feeling kind of shitty. Uh, it is what it is. It happens during this time of year, especially when the, the weather's really, really cold. And the heat has to be on. The dry heat has to be on all night, even with the humidifier. It kind of screws up my sinuses and everything. So, <clears throat> I am not feeling too great today uh, in that regard. I'm going to try to, you know, tough through it and put out two great streams for you guys regardless. But apologies if I sound kind of under the weather or whatever with congestion. Uh, it is what it is, okay? <clears throat> so, welcome everyone to the first of two gameplay streams for today. It's going to be an interesting, uh, you know, six straight streaming days to say the least. I hope you guys are excited. For everything to come. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys can expect. Um, so today, the end game of Final Fantasy VI. I've actually been playing Final Fantasy VI for 30 hours. And you may be like, huh? Really? Yeah, I know. It doesn't seem like that, does it? I only just started playing Final Fantasy VI uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's been an ongoing playthrough. I've been doing at least once or twice a week. Um, but we've actually played it that long. That's how long the game is. And I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed sharing my experiences in the game with all of you, my expertise and insight into the game, because I've played it so many damn times, <clears throat> have allowed me to show you some things that maybe, you know, in a normal playthrough I wouldn't, because I'm usually, usually I'm going cold turkey, new, new playthrough into a game I never played before, while well, this time I've played this game so many times I know a ton about it, okay? Um, <clears throat> today's actually going to be some of the best content in the game. The first thing we're doing today is we're heading to the... One of the hardest dungeons, if not the hardest dungeon in the game, where not only are there multiple optional boss fights, but you have to actually direct two different parties through this dungeon. So we have to make two different groups of characters, which will be pretty neat to do. Um, and then you get a party member back who's a key party member that allows you to get the best equipment in the game. And then we can head into the end game dungeons. There's two of them. So I don't know if we're going to beat the game today or not. It, it really depends on how long it takes me to beat this first initial dungeon, <clears throat> but if we don't wrap up the game today, this easily could be completed on a late night stream later this week, maybe this weekend, um, you know, to wrap things up and get the game finished. So one way or another, Final Fantasy VI is completing this week, whether it's today or it's a, a late night stream later this week, it is definitely going to conclude this week. I want to say thank you to all of you who uh, joined me for the fun of the Final Fantasy VI playthrough. I've absolutely loved every moment of it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to today because this is the end game, challenging content. <clears throat> and so hopefully you guys will enjoy it, okay? Um, later tonight, we are going to be checking out the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon demo. All right? Pretty neat. It's a franchise that I'm well aware that it exists, but I have never played before. Now, they are remaking the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry i told you my throat was all screwed up they're remaking the game for the nintendo switch and it's supposedly coming out this march now being that i've never ever play uh played this franchise before okay um <clears throat> i strongly am interested in this demo to see if i like it if i like it then i will consider playing the full-on remake in March, okay? I know that many people actually really like this franchise, but I really don't know anything about it, <clears throat> okay? So I guess we'll see how stuff goes later tonight. Now, to my knowledge, the demo is only about an hour long, so once we finish up the demo, we can just chill for like another hour and talk for a little bit and hang out to end tonight's late stream, okay? I'm totally okay with that. <clears throat> Then tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow we are doing things differently again. Um, it's the big podcast, all right? The special podcast 
um, that's going to do many things. The first thing the podcast will do is recap 2019. I'm going to talk about last year and talk about what went right and what went wrong. I'm going to talk about the highs and lows, both of <clears throat> my personal and my professional life. <clears throat> So that you guys know everything that's kind of been going on with me behind the scenes and everything that I don't really talk about all the time. But at the same time, I'll let you guys know how everything's going with the business, okay? Um, then I'm going to talk about some very important stuff that's currently going on that could possibly and most definitely will affect my streaming future. Um, and let you know all about what's going on, you know, uh, with me. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about the future of 2020. I want to talk a little bit about... <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to talk a little bit. Of, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about what you guys can expect this year, in regards to the streams, in regards to the business, in regards to consistency, in regards to a lot of things. Okay. So that's going to be coming up, and then a major segment on this podcast is going to be me going through the game release schedule for 2020, talking about which games I'm actually very interested in playing for sure, which games I'm kind of like on the fence about. All right. And basically populating a game calendar for the year because I haven't done that and I really have no concept of what's coming out when. <clears throat> so I don't even know what to tell you in regards to like, oh, <clears throat> this is my most anticipated game of the year. Or this is, you know, the one I'm really looking forward to in February. I don't even know what's coming out in February because I haven't had a chance to sit down and look at this shit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to be doing on the podcast. <clears throat> Okay, so there you go. Um, the podcast tomorrow is going to be long. I, just to forewarn all of you, it's going to have a lot of stuff for me to talk about uh, for the first time ever that is going to be, you know, inter uh, important and interesting and personal. Many of you might not give a shit. Many of you might care. It all really depends on your investment, uh, you know, on my streams and everything. So uh, that's the point of the doing the show because a lot of people complained over 2019. <clears throat> and they basically said... The problem, the major problem they have with my streams is every morning is like a podcast. When I do my pre-stream every morning, it's like a podcast, and not everyone could sit here for an hour and listen to the pre-stream podcast, but if they don't, they're not in the know on what's going on with me in the streams. So they end up like <clears throat> not knowing where to go for information and not knowing what's going on with my game release schedule and everything. They don't know anything, and then they just kind of have to tune into Twitter every day or whatever, and then they're kind of like, they feel like they're out of the loop. And people were like, you know, you used to do podcasts every once in a while that would get people caught up. It would be like the cumulative place where you talk about all this information. And we missed that about your old style of content. And I said, okay, fair enough. What I may start doing... <clears throat> yeah, what I may start doing um, is doing a podcast maybe once a quarter. Like maybe I'll do one in January and then one sometime in April and then one sometime in like uh, August. Do you see what I mean? <clears throat> Do a big podcast to get everyone caught up on everything going on with me so you know exactly what's happening, um, you know, behind the scenes and everything, and you will have a place to go to get caught up on everything, okay? <clears throat> so, that's going to be the purpose of tomorrow's show. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for it if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Don't worry. I record it and I upload it to YouTube, but if you can be here live tomorrow, it'll make sense. Plus, there should be, hopefully... At the end of the show, time for a Q&A session where I'll talk with you guys and answer questions. <clears throat> okay? So we'll see. We'll absolutely see what happens tomorrow. All right? Tomorrow night, Thursday night, it's going to be Super Mario World 2, uh, Yoshi's Island, a live stream. Two hours of fun retro SNES platforming fun. That should be good. Then on Friday, it's the big premiere. It's the first new game of the year. <clears throat> That's right. On Friday, it's the premiere of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. The Dragon Ball Z RPG. I don't think there's actually been an RPG-style Dragon Ball Z game in quite some time. There have been ones in the past, but... <clears throat> there has not been any notable Dragon Ball Z RPG in quite some time. So, this is something a little bit different. And that's starting up on Friday. Okay, Friday night... It's my weekly Street Fighter throwback session where I play old school Street Fighter 2, 3, and Alpha 3 in a late night session. That should be fun. <clears throat> On Saturday, um, it's more Dragon Ball Z. 
And then Dragon Ball, uh, excuse me, and then at night, the late stream will be Pokemon Sword, the trading stream. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be teaming up with a few people who want to trade Pokemon with me. Either to trade for the Pokemon that are exclusive to Shield, so that I can get those into my Pokedex, or the Pokemon that need to be traded to evolve, okay? Um, so, it should be an interesting and fun time. Uh, we are getting very close to completing my Pokedex. I believe we have like like maybe 80 Pokemon left to complete the Pokedex in Pokemon Sword, okay? And then uh, Sunday, <clears throat> we'll actually be going back to Knights of the Old Republic. <clears throat> so annoying. I hate when my fucking sinuses in my throat are screwing with me, and they are really badly today. But anyway, yeah. On more Knights of the Old Republic on Sunday. Sunday night um, could be Minecraft or... If we have not completed Final Fantasy VI by the end of today, more than likely Sunday night will be the conclusion of Final Fantasy VI. Okay, so we'll see. Let's play it by ear and see how we do today in Final Fantasy. That'll determine what Sunday night stream is. <clears throat> and then on Monday, it'll either be more nights... <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll either be more nights or it'll be more Dragon Ball. Okay? Um, depending on, again, who's liking what. You guys loving Dragon Ball, you want more, we'll do more on Monday. Maybe you want a break, you want nights two days in a row, we'll do nights two days in a row, we'll see, okay? So, we'll find out, um, come this weekend, how things are going, but that'll determine the streams on Monday and all of that, okay? Um, <clears throat> good stuff? Alright, so, that's the week that you guys can expect, FYI. Pretty good variety in there, and I'm happy that we're actually starting up with the new playthrough of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, because I really feel we need something new. Even though I've been doing old school kind of throwback playthroughs. You need a new release every once in a while. It's been a while. So finally we're going to get stuff going with new releases again with Dragon Ball Z. And then like I said with this podcast tomorrow. We'll actually be able to sit down and say. Oh okay here's all the games coming out for the year. <clears throat> so that we can actually have like a blueprint of what games I'm, I'm going to be playing in what month. Okay. So that's good stuff. <clears throat> Hope you guys are excited for all of that. Alright folks. All right, folks. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> um, oh, so the other important thing going on right now, guys, all right, is the voting for the Viewer's Choice playthrough. I have some bad news in regards to that, though. The website, at least a few minutes ago, was down. I haven't checked on it since my PC was screwed up and I had to restart and everything, but... The website went down, <clears throat> and that's not because of us. <clears throat> that's not because of us at all. That's because of the web host that we use for the website. Apparently went down, so we're waiting for them to go back up. But I do need you guys to keep voting on what game you want to see as the viewer's choice playthrough because that poll is actually going to close off uh, by the end of the week. And, yeah, it says web server's down. I just checked. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not us. Whenever the web server goes down for my website, that's definitely the hosting companies having issues. <clears throat> okay. So it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about that. We'll wait till the end of today and see if the website goes back up. If it does great, then I'll let you know. Please resume voting. Um, if not, we're going to have to contact the company and find out what the hell's going on. Cause obviously we can't do a viewer's choice event. If you guys can't choose, you're the viewers and you can't choose the game. Because the website's down where the poll is, right? <clears throat> so, it is what it is. Let's see what happens. Um, but, you know, the games that are in the running for Viewer's Choice are so unique and interesting. I can't wait to see what you guys end up picking. That also, that game will be in the running to become a, a game that will be the main stream game next week. Okay, so this week, the schedule's kind of already set. But once the Viewer's Choice poll continues over the course of this week, and we figure out what the game's going to be, then probably next week-ish... Uh, is when I will begin with that game, okay? So, <clears throat> that's the cool thing <clears throat> going on right now. When I have more information about that, I'll let you guys know. Hopefully, the website will be up sooner rather than later. Fair enough? Okay. Um. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's all I really have to talk about on the pre-stream. The only other thing, quickly, is that FYI, you know, we actually got very close to hitting the subscriber goal. Um, we were at 680-something subs at one point. We did dip a bunch overnight. We're back down into the 660s. But hitting the sub goal for this month is very doable. We have two weeks left in the month. We have to hit 700 subs <clears throat> at one point. 
to hit the subscriber goal. If we hit it, I'm going to be doing a special retrospective event. This is the event where you guys nominate your favorite moments of my 11 years as a content creator for us to watch back together during a marathon setting, okay? <clears throat> this is really fun, all right? Uh, and I'm really excited for this event because I love doing it with you guys, and it's always a good time, okay? So, good stuff, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully, we'll hit the sub goal, and we'll be able to do that as well. That'll be the next fun monthly event, and that'll probably go down in February if we hit the monthly goal this month, okay? All right, guys. So, that is it for the first segment of the pre-stream. Let's move on to the second segment, the gratuitous plugs. I'd like to thank all of you for 11 awesome years as a content creator on the internet, where on a daily basis, I've been able to share my gameplay experiences with all of you. Starting off as a full-time YouTuber, but now... Being a full-time streamer, I absolutely love what I do for a living. I know I'm one of the very few lucky people who get to do what I love for a living. Not many people get to say that. You know, that I, my, my passion is for gaming, and that, that passion is what I get to do for a job. That's pretty damned amazing, all right? But <clears throat> it certainly hasn't been without its highs and lows over the years. Um, and in regards to that, uh, you know, I used to be a full-time YouTuber who was re uh, reliant on YouTube ad revenue. To make ends meet, not so much anymore. I mean, YouTube ad revenue still exists, and it's still a little bit of income for me every month, but it's really primarily your crowdfunding via the streams that keeps me going, okay? <clears throat> so that being said, um, please consider contributing via one of the methods that I'm about to outline on this pre-stream. However, I would like to say something up front before I even mention a single way that you can contribute. Please understand... <clears throat> that contributions are appreciated, and they do keep stuff going, but they are not mandatory. It is not expected that any person would contribute on a stream. It is not required, and it is certainly not a demand, okay? I'm perfectly happy to just have people come by and hang out with me every day on stream, have a good time playing games, seeing my reactions, and just, in general, enjoying life, right? And that's the, that's the way to go. Um, but that being said, you know, if you can go above and beyond to... Uh, contribute and keep this stuff going. If you like the fact that I stream six days a week full-time at a minimum, you know, this week I'm actually streaming seven straight days, which is an exception, but I'm doing it. Um, if you like the fact that I still upload all of my archived streams over on DSP Gaming on YouTube, despite the fact I get almost nothing out of that, all right? <clears throat> if you like everything that I do and you want to see it continue, please consider contributing via one of the following methods. Fair enough? All right, hold on one second. I'm going to close my, my window blinds. And then we're going to outline the ways you can contribute, okay? All right, hold on. I'm going to crack the window open a tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Just so that it keeps stuff in here. Oh. Okay. Might have to get up to close that window later because right now it's stuffy in the office, but there's ice outside. I get the feeling it's going to get cold in here because I opened the window, but... Okay, so first of all, I have a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. This is where your monthly pledges can earn you personal perks as a way of saying thank you for your contributions. I will not go into detail about it because it's all publicly listed right there. Please give it a look. Thanks to anyone who even gives it a look and considers pledging. And, of course, super special shout-out to those who still pledge every month. Your contributions and support are much appreciated. <clears throat> I have a Teespring store where I sell all kinds of merchandise, particularly T-shirts, but there's other stuff like sweatshirts, stickers mugs etc um give it a look anything you buy there helps me out and you get a cool collectible out of it all right but if you're here live on the stream you probably primarily want to contribute in a way that's going to get you a live shout out and some recognition during the stream right so if you either cheer with bits or you subscribe to the channel or you tip me any of those three things i'm going to give you a live thank you shout out during the stream as a way of saying thanks in addition we have a some leaderboard at the top of the screen it's called the Stream Stats Leaderboard. It has things like the top cheerer and top tipper fully called out so that you get extra recognition for those contributions during the stream. In addition to that, there's actually a leaderboard that's built into Twitch itself. <clears throat> that tracks things such as top cheerer of the day and people who've gifted subs. Excuse me, not top cheerer of the day, top cheerer of the week. I misspoke. And people who've gifted subs for the week. So there's many, many opportunities for people to get recognized for their contributions, all right? In addition, there is the new hype train thing going on on streams. If you're not aware how that works, it's a new thing that Twitch launched this last week. <clears throat> and the way it works is, if five different people contribute via either 100-bit cheers, subscribing to the channel, or gifting a sub to someone, 
within a five minute period, so five contributions within five minutes, it starts up what's called a hype train. A big bar or a meter will appear on the screen, basically saying the hype train has begun, and then basically people need to contribute more via any kind of cheer, subbing, or gift subbing. And if the bar fills up, everyone who contributes unlocks a special emote, all right? Just to give you guys an example of some of these emotes, I'm now going to post those hype train emotes into the stream chat. So you're going to see them appear there in just a moment. If I can freaking bring them up here. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. There it is. I was like, hello, Twitch. You're going to show me the scroll bar so I can get to them? Here they are. So, so far on my stream, we've unlocked one, two, three, four, five, six different hype train emotes. <clears throat> that actually means that there's been six different successful hype trains. Even though I clicked on six, it only shows five. <laughs> what happened here? I clicked on all six. It didn't. Here we go. Here's the other one. So these are some of the hype train emotes that you can unlock as being part of a successful hype train. Okay. It's something that happens. It happens organically. It's not like I urge it on to happen. When some people start asking me about it, then other people might be urged to, to contribute to make it happen. It's cool when it does. And in particular, I've noticed this last week, definitely cheers and subs are up because of it. So I am appreciative of that. If anyone wants to participate in a hype train, by all means, uh, please do. When it does happen, I do talk about it and hype it up to keep people, you know, kind of uh, informed about what's going on. Because there's a time frame. They give you like a five-minute countdown timer to contribute and hit the next level of each each tier of the hype train. So I'll let you know when it's going on, if it happens. You know, yesterday didn't happen during the first stream. We tried to do one on the late stream, and it didn't go so well. So <laughs> it is what it is. <clears throat> now. Out of all the ways that you could contribute, guys, the best way that you could contribute, being very matter of fact with all of you, is by tipping me. When you tip me, those are funds that I can use immediately for things like paying bills, buying games, uh, taxes, buying groceries, etc. In this particular case, tips you give me, you know, today are going to go towards buying Dragon Ball Z Kakarot on Friday and towards paying some taxes and fees that I owe. Uh, you know, my tax guys and stuff like that. That's real generally where the, the tips are going this week. So please consider tipping me if at all you can. That is the way to help me out the most. All right. If you're going to tip me, a few things you should know. First of all, there's two ways to do it. Below the stream, there's a tips jar button you can click on. Or you can type exclamation point tip into the stream chat to bring up a link. That'll take you to my PayPal tips page. All right. When you're on that page, uh, you can either use a PayPal account to tip. Or you can actually uh, tip with a debit or credit card. If you don't see the option, that's probably because you're on a mobile device and it doesn't really load properly on a mobile device. What you need to do is load the desktop version of the PayPal Tips page, and that should bring up things like, oh, use a MasterCard, Visa, American Express, etc. Okay, much like anything else you buy on the internet. Also, if you are considering contributing to myself or any streamer today, all right, I have a recommendation for you. I hope you'll take this seriously and not just ignore it. Please do whatever you can to protect your identity, all right? And what I mean by that is there are some people on the internet who sadly, they do whatever they can to be malicious to people. Um, <clears throat> if they can hurt you and get your personal information, they will. It won't benefit them in any way to actually mess with you. They'll just do it to, for their own enjoyment. Like these are people who are so miserable in their real lives that they actually take personal enjoyment in knowing that they can anonymously mess with you and do stuff to you. What a lot of people don't realize in this day and age is you've got a lot of information public on the internet, especially if you use Twitter or Facebook. You've probably got a lot more personal info out there than you realize. Some people may be able to find out where you work or who your relatives are, etc. And that's the last thing you want is having someone on your butt trying to harass you on the internet because of the information that's there. So what I would say is this. If you're going to contribute to myself or anyone today, do what you can to protect your identity. Don't use your identity that's linked to one of your social media accounts and certainly don't use your real name. All right. If you're going to tip me today, there's a couple options you can do. You can either just say anonymous. No one would know it's you if you do that. Or you can just make up a name completely that has nothing to do with you. And that way you'll be protected. And, I, you know, I'm looking out for my, my viewers here. I want to make sure that you guys are protected and you don't have people harassing you online. Okay. So please do your best <clears throat> to protect yourselves. Fair enough? All righty. So, continuing on. Let's now talk about the rules of the stream, everybody. I stream on Twitch.tv. That means that I have to abide by all the rules and regulations of Twitch.tv, right? Just a no-brainer. But in addition to that, I have my own sets of rules to maintain a certain chill vibe around my streams. Allow me to explain. Um, 
Basically, when you come to one of my gameplay streams, I want you to feel relaxed and at home. I want you to feel like you can escape all the stresses and the annoyances of your everyday life and just come here and chill with me. Have a good time. Watch me react to a game that I'm playing. Uh, you know, enjoy my gameplay. Maybe interact with me or interact with some other stream chatters. And in general, just, you know, have a good chill time. That's the point. <clears throat> some other streams are all about drama and doing all this kind of arguments and stuff. Not me. I want this to just be a good time enjoying games together, okay? So, because of that, there's a few rules that I have in effect that I feel maintain that atmosphere. The first is that there are two particular topics that we do not talk about on the streams because I definitely feel that if we do, they derail the stream and they cause tons of arguments. Those topics are politics and religion. In my over 11 years as a content creator, I have found that whenever these topics come up during gameplay, they tend to derail everything. People get angry. They can't tend to agree to disagree. They can't see from another perspective. And in general, they just make things really nasty. And that's the last thing that I want. Okay? <clears throat> so, that being said, um, please understand that bringing those topics up is strictly against the rules. Now, there is an exception to the rule. If we're playing a game where those topics are pertinent... Then we can talk about them. Oh, there's a game that has politics and religion discussed in it. That's fine. If it's in regards to, you know, a reference to a game or whatever, perfect. But please don't just start bringing up, you know, the Dem the Democratic debate last night and Donald Trump and Brexit and this and that. You know, it's, it's not going to serve a purpose besides just getting people angry. So please, none of that in my streams, okay? In addition, I am well aware that there are a lot of people out there on the internet who on a daily basis like to say nasty things about me make shit up about me, defame me, defraud me, insult myself and my family, and literally slander me as much as they can because it gets them attention. It gets them views on their clickbait videos. When they steal my live streams by illegally restreaming them or ripping my videos off YouTube and re-editing them to make me look bad, they make money, okay? That's why they do it. They get notoriety and they make money doing it, and that's why they continue to do it. Um, sadly for me, there is really no recourse for this, uh, there, I have no defense against it. I'm not rich. I can't sue these people. Um, so sadly, I just have to kind of put up with it. Uh, and I know it exists out there. There's no reason for us to address it on a stream or bring it up. Because when you do that, you're literally just giving them the attention that they want. And it, it's it's counterproductive. Okay? Sometimes we get innocent people who come out and hear, Oh, Phil, first time viewer, but did you know I found that someone's restreaming you? I, I don't care. We don't need to talk about it. We don't need to address it. It's completely a moot point. It's going to happen no matter what. Until one day YouTube shapes up and doesn't allow that crap to happen anymore, which apparently is never going to happen. Um, there's nothing we can do. <clears throat> okay? So please understand that. And know that it is what it is. And it's against the rules to bring it up because that's just going to derail the stream and give them more attention. So please do not do so. Okay? Alright, fair enough. Um, let's now continue. And move on to the third and final segment of the pre-stream, the shout-outs. This is where I give credit to those who have contributed. I talk with you guys a little bit. We have a little bit of discussion before I get into today's gameplay, okay? All right, we start off with Junior Mint 7 <clears throat> who did 100-bit cheer to get the cheering started for today. He says, bro, I need. I, I, I hope your podcast doesn't have bad news. Take 2020 by the balls, man. You got this. Um, the podcast is what it is. You'll see tomorrow what's going on. I'm not going to spoil anything whatsoever. But tomorrow will basically tomorrow will be highs and lows. I'm gonna I told you I'm gonna talk about the great stuff and the not so great stuff. I'm gonna tell you the truth of the matter about a lot of stuff <clears throat> to get people caught up, and it should be a good show. It should be, and I think by the end of the show, some people's eyes will be opened about what's going on with me, and uh, I think that it'll be a good one. All right, so hopefully you'll join me tomorrow for the podcast. Thank you for the first cheer of the day, Kane Z Seven. Then 100 bit cheer. He says, I know in the end it's your decision. Why did you leave out some games from the viewer's choice, games that had many votes? Uh, well, Kane Z7, good question. During the viewer's choice nomination process, there were a ridiculous amount of games that were nominated. And it was impossible to really narrow it down by the amount of votes because there was like, I'm not even kidding, probably about 12 to 15 games that were all tied <clears throat> at around three votes each. Now you may say, well, three votes isn't a lot, but. To actually get people to nominate the same game three times during a viewer's choice is actually pretty tough because everyone's nominating different games. I think there was like, oh, like seriously, like 60, 70 games nominated, something crazy like that. Um, so, what I had to do, first of all, the games that did have the overall most nominations did make the poll. But then I had to start eliminating some of the games that had three nominations each. And what I did is I used a few different criteria 
First of all, if it was a game that I already was likely to play in the future, I eliminated it. So, for example, Elder Scrolls Morrowind. I already told you guys that's going to definitely be a chill game playthrough I'm going to be doing eventually as a late night stream uh, later this year. I already own the game on Xbox One. It's a no-brainer that I would do this. So why am I going to have it as the viewer's choice poll when I'm already going to play it? I'm already guaranteed to play it. That would be pretty silly, right? So that was an example of one that I eliminated based on the fact that it didn't make sense for me to play it. Um, <clears throat> there were a few others. You know, I don't have the list in front of me right now, so it's hard for me to tell you the definitive reasons for each one. But generally, that's kind of the rule that I used was, um, oh, you know, this is one that either it's likely to be played or there were some that if I remember correctly... It wouldn't have made sense. Again, I, I don't have the list in front of me. I wish that I had the list sitting directly in front of me so I could address ones that maybe you had a specific question on. Kane, if you have a specific one that you're wondering why it's not in the final poll, feel free to ask me during the stream and I'll, I'll give you an answer. But without having to... I, I, like I said, there was a ton. If I, if I had put every game that had three or more nominations into the poll, I'm not exaggerating, the poll would have been like 20 or more options. Now, I'm sorry, but when you're trying to do a pick... The last thing you need is 20 or more options. All that does is it convolutes everything. It makes it far too complicated. It makes people not want to vote. Um, so I had to narrow it down as best I could. And if you see, the games that are in there, there's a wide variety of games. There's action games, platformers, RPGs. Uh, you know, like every genre is pretty much represented. Um, so, and I believe I did actually pick 14 games. Even then, I think that's too many. But yeah, 14 freaking games, okay? So I hope that answers. Again, if you have a specific game to ask about Kane, feel free to ask me, okay? Honest Fan did 120-bit cheer and says, Why do you warn about the bottle crunches now? I feel that a good bottle crunch comes out of nowhere and re-energizes the stream. Crunch a bottle and pretend it's a hater. Well, no, I don't crunch a bottle and pretend it's a hater. That's ridiculous. But people basically were saying when I didn't warn them that sometimes it would actually legitimately hurt their ears, especially if they listen to the stream with headphones. So now I at least give a warning so people know what's going on and it doesn't hurt them. I don't want to hurt my viewers, you know. Um, I, I don't listen to stream, a, stream, a stream with headphones. Yeah, I don't even know how that boosts the audio of a stream, so I wouldn't even know, uh, you know, how that affects you. But I feel bad if people are telling me, man, my ear hurts now because you crunched a bottle. So that's why I give a warning now, okay? <clears throat> By the way, Honest Fan, yes, you're, you're the top che uh, cheer of the day. Let me get you up on the leaderboard. Yes, Richard Link. We are aware the website is down. It is, it is the host is that is down. It has nothing to do with us or our website. It's the actual web host is down right now. So that should hopefully be back up by the end of today. And if not, obviously, we got to contact the web host, web host and find out what the hell's going on. So, uh, Internet Famous McCroy did 100 bit cheers. Says, if we can't get a DSP Frog emote t shirt, can we get a DSP Frog emote sticker? I want to slap them everywhere. So you like the DSP Frog emote, huh? Um,. I could probably make a shirt, but I guarantee you the shirt wouldn't look good because the emote is pretty small. You know, even even the high quality version of the emote is pretty small, so it would be pretty silly. I doubt anyone would buy the T-shirt anyway. Um, I guess what I could do is, uh, I could look to, if you wanted me to see if I could add a sticker and make it work. I could look into that. If you're serious about it. You know, only if you're serious about it, because that's work for me to have to go and mess around with the art and try to get it to fit and everything. So please, only if you're serious about it. If you're not, just let me know, and I'm not going to waste time on it, okay? <clears throat> um, Ninstar Room did 100-bit cheer. He said, what is your favorite cryptid? Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, etc. Are there any you believe in personally? You know, I'm not too much into that kind of stuff. I guess it's not urban legends, but you're right. It's kind of like these long-standing legends that there's these, like, creatures we haven't discovered yet. And they're out hiding somewhere. Uh, do I believe that there are creatures on the planet Earth we don't know about? Yes. But I believe that these are creatures that are incredibly elusive and probably live in places like the jungles where you didn't document every bug type. Or the deep, deep, deep sea where it's too deep for us to go down and even explore. There's probably creatures down there that don't even need sight. And they live. You know what I mean? Um, do I believe that there's some kind of, of weird missing link ape creature out in the freaking woods of washington state or oregon or somewhere here hiding out not really <clears throat> um do i believe in the Loch Ness monster no i don't um i'm more of a, a pragmatic guy when it comes like that okay um so in that regards um i would say no but i'm always open to to, to possibility i'm not one of these closed-minded people 
that says, oh, science doesn't dictate that these things don't exist, therefore I don't ex I don't believe in it. I'm open to always being presented evidence and saying, oh, look, here's some evidence that maybe these things do exist, okay? So for me, I guess I would say Bigfoot is my favorite. Reason being, I actually live in the areas where people claim Bigfoot exists. Like if I drive 30 minutes, I could head out into the woods and these are areas where people are like, oh yeah, Bigfoot's been sighted out here and stuff. It's pretty silly. Um, but I guess that's because it's the closest one to me. That would be the one that's my favorite. So there you go. PW Dubs took me a dollar. He says he's cordially inviting myself and my wife to go ballroom dancing. No thanks. Then he took me another dollar. He says, do you have a parting message to PewDiePie as he takes from uh, his break from YouTube? Sure. My parting message to Pewdie PewDiePie is so long and thanks for all the fish. PW Dubs took me another dollar. He says, will the podcast be kind of like your debunk stream? No. I'm not debunking anything during this podcast at all. There's nothing to, it's not a debunking session. It's more just to me about me telling you guys about stuff going on in my life and getting you guys caught up with stuff, okay? So, PW Dubs apparently did $3 tips within a very short period. <clears throat> Let me get them up there on the leaderboard. And get the leaderboard updated here to say three bucks. There we go. Thank you, PW Dubs. Okay, so KZ7 cheered again. He's being more specific now. He says, um... It's okay, I'm wondering, games like Atelier, Ryza, and Lisa had four votes each, but still on the list, there were games that only had three votes. Um, well, in regards to Atelier, Ryza, I've already answered people's questions about this game a million times, and they don't seem to listen. They say, Phil, you're going to play Atelier, Ryza. Are you interested in playing Atelier, Ryza? Is this a game that you would do? My answer is no, I researched it. And apparently the game is incredibly boring. It's a crazy grind and a time killer. This is not something that would be fun for an extended playthrough at all. This is something that, like, if you're heavily into the kind of, like, anime-esque kind of games, maybe you'll like it. Or, if you're looking for a crazy, crazy long time killer game. Like, I want a game I can I could just play for a couple hours a night to unwind for, like, six months. Then you would play Atelier Ryza. This is not a game that's going to make sense for my streams. So, it would, be, it would have been the same thing if someone picked another game that's, like, just totally not in line with my stuff, like... Oh, I want Phil to do a, a playthrough of a game that's much, uh, you know, it's adult-oriented sexual stuff. No, I'm not going to play that, right? Oh, I want Phil to play fucking Barbie Horse Adventures. No, I'm not going to play that. It's the same thing. It's the kind of game that, yes, it has an audience. That's not my audience. So maybe four people want to see me play that weird shit on the sake of an oddity, but I'm not going to do a ginormous full playthrough of the game when so many people subbed in order to make the viewer's choice happen and then somehow we get people skewing the voting and stuff for a game that doesn't even make fucking sense. <clears throat> so we're not doing that game, okay? Lisa, I don't even know what Lisa is. Um, and I apologize because, again, off the top of my head, I can't tell you what exactly the process was for every game. But if I remember correctly, like, I was looking at all the other games. I was like, damn, these are all games that are great that I would enjoy playing that I know the viewing audience would like to see. And I have to narrow this list down somehow. So I just basically eliminated a game that I didn't know what the hell it was. And I think Lisa was a case of that. Like, Atelier Ryza, I knew what it was. And I was like, okay, this is not going to make sense for my streams. But I didn't know what the hell Lisa was. I still don't know what the hell Lisa is. Okay? <laughs> so, there you go. Um, Alfred Aponte, what's going on, dude? He tipped me a dollar. He says, Phil, hope you're a good man. What's your favorite soft drink or soda? Say hello to Cat and Mr. Jasper. Um, overall favorite. Probably something that's a little bit more mellow. Like, I would say, uh, you know, like a Sierra Mist or something that's refreshing. Something that doesn't have a ton of flavor when it comes to, like, like cola's good, but I like cola when I'm having, like, a meal or something. I probably wouldn't just grab a Coke and drink it during the day. I would prefer, like, a Sprite or a Sierra Mist or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm trying to think here. Is there anything, like, I used to love Mountain Dew a lot when I was a kid, but that thing is so full of sugar and caffeine, but that's because I was looking for energy when I was a kid. Um, oh, you know what I really like? Dr. Pepper. I think Dr. Pepper is really unique because it doesn't really taste like anything else. Uh, but I love it. It has like, almost like a cherry flavor, but it's got something else in there too that I can't put my finger on. So I really like Dr. Pepper. And also, another thing that a lot of people sleep on, root beer. A lot of people think root beer is kind of crappy. I actually really like root beer. I don't drink soda that much, but 
You know, if I'm at a, at a place where it has a soda machine and they have either like root beer or Dr. Pepper, I'd probably get that over like Coke or something like that. So, <clears throat> here you go. Sound good? Okay. Cousin Sven13 has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Cousin Sven, for the sub. I appreciate that. Um. Okay. All right. Good stuff, right? Okay. So continuing on, let's now give a shout out to the top cheerers of the week. Um, oh, hold on. Shout out to Junior Man 007 who actually did uh, another 100-bit cheers. Did you ever play poker at any of the casinos in Connecticut when you lived there? I never did. Some of my friends did because some of my friends were, were into that stuff. We would actually play poker with each other. Like we would have a, a poker game at each other's houses and stuff at night. But I never played poker at a casino. F a few of my friends did. Uh, a few times when I was there, and they lost all their money. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, top cheers of the week. Thank you guys so much for your cheering support this week. We have a triple tie for 8th place between Crapcock, Ladies Man 69, and Alka Ripa. 7th <clears throat> place this week. Oh, excuse me. There's another one. And Godfrey Parks. So, it's actually a four-way tie. Okay, thank you guys. Um, in 6th place, Sambuca 2020. 5th place is Honest Fan. Fourth place, Junior Man 007. Third place, Mr. Papa Vera. Second place, Pimp My Shed Plays. And in first place for this week so far, Snake Eater 1247. So thank you guys for your cheering support. That is very, very appreciated. We have not had any subs gifted yet this week. That's okay. The week is young. We've only streamed one day so far yesterday. Um, so maybe there will be some sub gifted this week. We'll see. Keep in mind, guys, we are getting closer to the sub goal. Let's actually check on the sub count right now. We're at 665 subs, FYI. So we need 35 more subs to hit the sub goal. That's definitely doable. Please consider subbing if you have not. Also, Alfredo Ponte tipped me a dollar and said, any chance you'll play a Fire Emblem game? There is a chance. In fact, Fire Emblem Three Houses is one of the games in the Viewer's Choice poll. It's in there. Okay? Um, apologies that you can't vote on the poll right now because the website is down because the web host is down. Nothing I can do about that. But, yeah, please, you know, if that's something you want to see... Vote for it in the poll when the poll goes back up. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Guys, let's take a break. I'm going to use the re the restroom quickly. And then we're going to come back. And like I said, this is the end game of Final Fantasy VI. The very first thing we're doing, we're going to the optional dungeon that's one of the toughest in the game, but it's actually one of the most fun. You use multiple parties in this dungeon. So I'll actually be able to use a ton of characters that I've recruited. <clears throat> and then... After that, we're going to go and unlock some of the best items in the game. Then we're going to go see Gao's dad. And then we're going to go to some of the end game uh, dungeons. There's two of them. Uh, we'll see how far we get today. If we beat the game, amazing, great. If we don't, it needs to be one late night stream later this week. So be it. We can do that as well. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you. Give me a couple minutes here for a quick break. And then it's time to start. I'll be right back. 